even if uh, we are quite popular in Hungary, this is my first ever English language uh, talk about Fortepan. So uh, I wrote a short text, good news is short, uh, and I hope uh, we can meet today evening or tomorrow personally and uh, discuss the whole issue of uh, amateur photography. So I will read my text. Ah, one thing. Uh, so this is a best of Fortepan uh, series of photos. There is an option on the website uh, to display the best of photos, but the best of tag is made by me and given by me. So I am the only person who can add this best of. You have no uh, chance to select your best ofs, but the good news is that you can create your own uh, any kind of series of uh, Fortepan images, so you can make private list of uh, photos and you can also display like this. The only question is that uh, you, you would like to see like this or shall we add the captions to the images? Because there is an option to see the years, the donator names and whatever, or you just enjoy like this. Like this, okay. So, Fortepan is an online photo archive where you can browse and download nearly 200,000 images. It takes its name from the only Hungarian-made negative film, a cheap and popular material, one that used to be manufactured in the Forte factory, as Rosa already mentioned. I didn't know that she will have an explanation. All our images are free to download and use for any purpose even for market products. As such, it is the most important Hungarian photo archive. Every year, 15,000 new photos are added to the collection in high resolution under CC license. The archive was funded in 2010 with my friend Akos Sepesi, a former classmate from high school. At that time, there were 5,000 photos in the collection. We had been collecting photos since the late 80s at flea markets and from friends. In 2010, we felt that it would be interesting to digitize all the photos we had collected and display them online. The plan was to digitize every single picture. We had about 30,000 images because we expected every picture to be interesting. After a week of scanning, we realized that this was far from the case. The collection was full of uninteresting or technically bad photos. We felt that all these crappy photos overshadowed the interesting ones. So we started to sort through them. Our method of working has been the same ever since. We try to select the interesting, important, meaningful frames and leave out anything that doesn't touch us, me, personally. In 2010, the only added piece of data was the year the photo was taken. This was necessary because the photos were displayed chronologically on a timeline. And this is chronological also, so probably you will see the changes of the decades. In many cases, we had to guess it proved to be a good idea to present the photos in a uniform, chronological way, as they were not related to each other. It was easy for readers to feel like they could jump back and forth in time and step through the 20th century from the beginning of the century to 1990. With 5,000 photos at that time, it was even realistic to look through the whole collection. So it was realistic to look through the whole collection in a couple of hours, something that no one would really do today. The end date needs some explanation. Why didn't we close Fortepan with the year 2000? The answer is personal. 1990 marked the change of regime in Hungarian and Eastern European history. In 1990, socialism suddenly ended. Looking back 20 years later, it seemed, and still seems to me, 
that history itself ended in 1990. What we have had since then is the present, and as such is not history, but part of the present. Looking through the photos, it really makes sense. As an editor, you can tell almost immediately from an unknown photo whether it was taken before or after 1990. Our 20th century ended in 1990. In order to be included in Fortepam, a photo needs a date, nothing else. In 2010, the photos did not have a donor, as all the photos were from our own collection. A few weeks after the launch, Fortepan images kept on popping up in the online press. It turned out that journalists were hungry for free archival photos. The images were an instant success. They first appeared in print, posters, on, and even on CD and book covers. Beyond our widest expect expectations, we managed to achieve a lot in a few weeks. Many images started a new life cycle. But what kind of photos were they? On the website, the introduction offered history from below, through the cameras and families and amateur photographers. There are no official or press photos here, no major political events, what people are shown. Instead, you can see streets, houses, gardens, apartments, vehicles, all kinds of old objects and interiors. And most importantly, almost all the pictures include people, unknown families, most likely people long decades. It was this general personal character, the presence of charming, elegant, emotional figures that made Fortepan really interesting. With eyes used to staged press photos, we immediately felt that we saw something different. Reality, maybe, or a, or a faithful image of reality inside us, where a playground from 1978 tells us more about the world than hundreds of press photos. This may be the real secret of the private photo. We can identify ourselves with the, with the unknown families in the photos. We can see our common grandmothers, neighbors, and classmates in the pictures. A few weeks after the launch of Fortepan, two unexpected things happened to us. The first was that unknown readers started sending us scanned photos from their own family albums, asking if they could be included in Fortepan. In other words, we started the hopefully never-ending ripple effect that still defines our operations today. Families and photographers came to us and offered their photos for digitization and selection. What I have been longing for decades has happened we have received prints and negatives from unknown authors, and all we had to do was sort them. Without advertising ourselves, and without ever signing any contracts or legal declarations with donors, our existence gave us enough confidence to have families share their own past with us. The basis of all this was the free and hassle-free use of Fortepan. The other unexpected thing happened two months after the launch. One of our readers, Gabor Lovash, a metro driver by background, started an internet forum called Fortepan Solutions, Descriptions. On this forum, readers hiding behind nicknames tried to describe what one saw in the pictures. Typically, they try to define where the pictures had been taken, but sometimes they also try to describe objects, events, and even characters. It seemed incredible, and I have followed it with Ave ever since, that our unknown readers could identify some of the most extraordinary places in the country, or even in Europe, 
in photographs 50 or 100 years old. My first great astonishment was a turn of the century photo which read the Schaffhausen waterfall. This waterfall in front of which men in bowler hats stood with walking sticks was also included in the clue illustrated with a modern Google photo of the waterfall. Having seen this, I thought after such a solution, description, we cannot do without captions next to the photos. This information should be shared with our readers. In other words, all those photos, which until then had largely been of aesthetic value to us, have been given historical value. And even among the first 5,000 photos, there were hundreds of streets, churches, long defunct shops, or schools. These data were then, a few months after the launch, published alongside the pictures. The practice of describing the photos has been the same ever since. The pictures are first displayed on the timeline without no any data. Then the forum generates a caption, which the editors use to create a caption for the website. But who are these editors? And what is the daily routine in the newsroom? The editorial staff consists of one paid employee, that's me, and seven, eight volunteers. I single-handedly sort out all of the photos that come to our little studio from the families or readers. As I mentioned, we tend to publish 15,000 photos a year. I look through many times that number, typically negatives, and scan about twice that number. The prints are scanned by a volunteer colleague, a lady. The negatives are scanned by myself. After final sorting, the photos are assembled into editions of two or 3,000. Every year, we launch five, six editions on the website. This may consist of one author's material, or a mixed series by many authors, where we select photos from dozens or families. Once the photos have been published, the forum will start to describe the fresh crop. From this raw data, two of my fellow editors create captions, which are continuously uploaded to the website. As of today, about 70% of the photos are accompanied by a caption usually a description of the location, less often a description of an event or person. I can safely say that Fortepan's captions are professional, real, reliable, and authentic. This is due to the fact that each caption is reviewed and validated by 20 experienced forum participants. This working method is radically different from the practice in a museum or an archive. But we believe in our own ways, since it's based on the knowledge and control of the community, on crowdsourcing. Moreover, it can be improved at any time because everything is done online. The editorial team also includes a number of other volunteers who do important work. Some of them edit our Facebook page, others physically assist bringing and receiving parcels or preparing photos for scanning. A partner edits and approves keywords submitted online. I would like to mention two of my co-editors separately. The first one is my friend Istvan Viragvöldi, who is the artistic director of Kappa Center. But, it, but in his spare time, he is the editor-in-chief of the weekly Fortepan blog. Istvan conceives and edits 52 articles per year in collaboration with some great journalists he works with. The blog is a very important background and parallel site to Fortepan, as it can present stories and authors to the readers in addition to images. It gives a background to the photos that Fortepan cannot do with short captions. Finally, Andras Török, cultural historian, Fortepan's manager, is an important member of the editorial team. Without Andras, there would certainly be no Fortepan, 
as he makes sure that the programmers and I have a salary. This financial support comes from three sources. A few major patrons, two, three public tenders per year, and the 1% income tax donation that Fortepan fans redirect to us. Now that I have outlined how we work, let's take a look at the collection. What images are on Fortepan? I have already mentioned that the main source of the archive is the word of family albums and negatives. These images are typically brought to us by older generations. In the last couple of years, most of them don't even ask for the albums back. They feel that the photos only mean something to themselves, that they are the only ones who know the characters, or not even them. So these family archives will survive on Fortepan in digital form. The original albums are taken out of the home environment. I don't think this is a good thing because family, family albums naturally belong to home bookcases. Could this separation and disconnection also be an Eastern European method? Whatever the case, the saddest experience for me in the recent years have been when I fetch albums from apartments that are being vacated or carefully dated, packaged negatives, slides from rare trips to Western Europe with the itemized locations of the pictures next to them kept in a spiral notebook. These bourgeois apartments and homes are now disappearing for good. Another important source is the archive of professional photographers. These legacies have not been mentioned so far, but they, are, they add a big value to Fortepan. But why does a professional photographer choose us? The reason is simple. If someone in Hungary today wants their material to be visible in the online space, Fortepan is the best choice. It's true that here, their photos will be mixed with the photos of more than a thousand, usually amateur authors. So they will not be part of a classic photo museum collection. In return, however, we process the negatives relatively quickly, and their images will almost certainly be published in the press on a regular basis. To date, nearly 10 important authors in the history of Hungarian photography have shared their entire oeuvre with us, and we hope for more. Authors who were among the most important figures of Hungarian press photography from the 50s onwards, such as Antal Kotnyek, Zoltán Szalai, Sándor Boyár, or Tomás Urban. I'm sure that a better functioning museum of photography which I would like to talk about at the end of my lecture, could have important authors from all of them. The third important source of images is the collection of museums and archives. In recent years, we have worked for some large national museums such as Transport Museum and the Geographical Museum. We have selected images from the collection of some church archives. For example, the archives of the Jesuits, and Benedictine orders. And we have scanned photos for the Budapest city archives and several county archives. A special area of interest for us have been some archives of the large state-owned design and construction companies of the socialist period. We have digitized tens of thousands of photos from their road, metro, and railway construction companies. Despite the diverse sources, Fortepan emanates a kind of unified mood, worldview, and atmosphere. We find that images of family holidays and Christmases sit well alongside images of sewer works or a police forensic officer. Rather, the photos complement and reinforce each other, giving the illusion that there are pictures of almost everything on Fortepan. Even one's own former school, workplace, home 
even his or her family can appear in the photos. Let me offer a personal example. I have spotted my father already on three pictures. Uh, actually, two and a half photos, to be precise. I also found, uh, I found two photos of him as a university student in the 50s, and one of his first car, a Wartburg, is German car, which I recognized by the registration plate. In fact, the chan chances of recognizing our grandparents, our parents, or even ourselves, are very slim, mainly because our memory is photo-based. We don't recognize the characters in a picture, but the picture itself. We tend to remember what we have already seen. So in a photo that we have never seen before, it's very difficult to recognize our parents. And it is also difficult to believe that it is really our parents in the photo. Although as a simple reader, it might seem that everything is pictured on Fortapan, unfortunately, this is not true at all. Hungarian history of the 20th century hides many dark spots documented by very few known photos if any. The best known of these dark spots relate to the Holocaust and the dicta dictatorship of communism, respectively, respectively. One example is enough to illustrate the, the situation. In the history of Hungarian photography, there is not a single picture of the Jewish ghetto of Budapest from the year 1944 and, 40, uh, and 45, where nearly 40,000 Jews suffered and tried to make ends meet in the shadow of death. All of the known pictures of the Budapest ghetto today were taken after the Soviet liberation. Moreover, they were taken by Soviet war correspondents. Likewise, we have no pictures of the largest Hungarian gulag camp in Rechk, northern, northern Hungary, where thousands of wrongfully arrested people were tortured and detained for years. We don't know a single picture of the inner life of this camp. The most glaring omission is the absence of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of photographs taken by the political police of state socialism. While textbooks and even educational films of the time have survived on how to take photographs with hidden cameras when observing the enemy within, only a few hundred of these pictures survived the regime change. Fortunately, some of these frames can be seen on Fort Pan. At the same time, the variety of images and donors make sure that Fortepan is now more or less suitable for presenting the entire history of the 20th century. Over the years, it has become evident that the inner character of great historical events, wars, revolutions, and dictatorships can be well portrayed through private photography. History is the background and sometimes the focus of the images of families and amateur photographers. A surprisingly large number of photographs were taken and survived from the two world wars and the revolution of 56. For years, a sister site has been operating in the US in Iowa under the name Fortepan, Iowa. After years of collecting photos, Bettina Fabosch, the founding of this website, visited Budapest. At the end of a long conversation, Bettina looked at me and said, how nice for you here in Central Europe. So much happened during the 20th century. In Iowa, history was hardly more than the change in barbecue party tools. If you consider this, we are really lucky. Finally, I would like to say a few words about the future of Fortepan. I don't have a clear vision on this. 
At the same time, I would like everything to continue in the same way as we have done so far. Apparently, my life can be filled with tens of thousands of legacies, tens of thousands of negatives from unexpected places. Just one example. In the last two months, I have been working on the legacy of a hairdressing photographer who took nearly 50,000 images at hairdressing schools, hairdressing exams, hairdressing salons, and hairdressing competitions. It seems that the reserves of analog photography are truly never ending. But I sometimes wonder, and I am one by well-meaning friends, that the Fortepan collection cannot depend on my personal fate. Clearly, Fortepan's natural place would be in the Museum of Photography. This museum is currently operating in a dormant state 100 kilometers from Budapest in Kecskemét, and we have almost no, con no connection with them. An important task for the coming years is to change this. The hundreds of thousands of original pictures that have come to us are certainly not in the best place in my room and in our small storage room. They should all be in a museum. The real question, however, may be, could this kind of photo archiving based on personality and subjectivity work in a museum? Is this unprofessional, amateur, avant-garde experiment profes professionally viable? And can it be continued without us, without the Fortepan team?